All right. Hey guys, welcome to the Oh man, this isn't this is technically the second episode, but we called the first episode episode 0. But uh welcome to How to Copy and Steal. My name is Chris. Uh today we have an exciting episode for you guys. We are talking to a power couple today from San Diego. <laughs> but before we go into that, let's roll the intro. always forget about that last one. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So uh, like I was saying today, I am joined by a power couple here today. Um, I have Skylar and Max. Um, So yeah, you could play a little, play a little applause actually. (laughs) Put me in. Come on. on. Yay. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Uh, Let me, uh, this was the loose guideline. Um, So yeah, I, I first, I wanted to figure out, so I know you guys are both not from San Diego, right? Is that true? Right. How did you guys get here? Um, well, um, I visited here a few years ago, probably four years ago Okay. Um, in OB, and I absolutely fell in love. And I was like, oh, this is the place I want to be. You know, it's just one of those spots. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had just started dating Max. And we were very fresh. This was prior. Wait, so you, you guys didn't meet here? We'll rewind a little bit. I mean, come on. We got to do, do the mean? whole, we should do the whole thing. All I right. was, I was bartending. Oh, I, think I had a story. I was like <laughs> serving bartending at a concert venue that was like in the middle of downtown Baltimore. And then she was working at this dive bar that was in Fells Point. It's like on the harbor. Okay. I, I actually and know where that's at. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then um, that spot was like definitely like, the place where all the bartenders and everybody else would go after their shift was over. So I started going over there and then I met Skylar and we went on a date together. And after we started dating officially, she was like, "Uh, Hey, I'm visiting San Diego and also probably moving there in a year. So I don't know if you want to do this, but yeah, I'll let you take it away from there. But yeah, (laughs) that's that's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How long was was this in? uh, Just a couple months. So I definitely couldn't be like, Hey, um, that couple months is enough to feel some type of way about someone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I told him that, and then we were dating. Um, we kept dating, seeing each other, and then it obviously got progressively more serious. And I guess, what, like six six to eight months in? I was like, you know, San Diego seems cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, would you mind if I yeah. joined you? And I was like, no, not at all. Let's do it. Like, let's see what happens, um. you know. And... Um, we left in the end of June, and we took like three weeks across the country and just kind of. What year was this again? Uh, yeah, that's okay. Two thousand and eighteen. Three and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we started wow. dating in two thousand seventeen, so two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then yeah, we took like an awesome like cross country road trip. Took our time, um, bounced around everywhere, all of our favorite places from like New Orleans and uh, Colorado, all those places. That is dope. Yeah. yeah. How long was that trip? Three like weeks? Three weeks? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had like two days in New Orleans that turned into like five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was fun. That, yeah. that sounds uh, amazing. Yeah, it was great. And then, um, yeah, we moved to OB. And actually, um, cool story, the place that I st- had stayed in previously before, mm-hmm. like, we had even started dating, we actually live there now. So I was like, Wait, cr- was this like a friend and Airbnb? Yeah. Oh, it was a friend okay. from high school. And um, I was like sleeping on an air mattress in our now living room four years ago. And now it's our house. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's like full Shit. circle. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah we circle. expected to take one room in the house. And then shortly after she uh, the, the girl that we had moved in with was like, I have to move back home. And we took over the whole house and we're like, well, OK, it's time to grind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that the, the same? So I've been over to one of your places. Yeah, it's right. the same. Yeah. Oh, same one. Yep. Oh, yeah, that yeah, is man. nice. So now, fast forward, you guys oh. are s- running your own businesses. Um, how did this start? Like, what made you guys even want to start? A she business? was first. Or who was first? Yeah, yeah she <laughs> was definitely first by a year and a half. Okay, probably. Yeah. yeah. What was what is it like an itch? Was it something you always knew was going to happen, or was it just something about San Diego? Was like I can do something here. You know. Like, a little bit of everything that you just said. Um, I had, okay, so I worked at a lab prior to moving here for a long time, and I just, I did not like it at all. 
Um, it was just one of those like repetitive things. And I was like, you know what? Like, I just want to get out of here. I just want to move. And what, what were you doing at that lab? If you don't mind me asking. No, not at all. So I was doing um, like vaccine okay. clearance testing. Okay. So people would come in and be like, we have this new drug and we would test it and then publish. Is this it. something like you went to school for? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I went to school for um, biology and okay. then um, it led me to that lab job. Okay. Um, and then fast forward, moving to San Diego, um, I started taking, or actually Max got me, uh, for Christmas, these, um, herbal classes. Okay. Oh, wow. That is where it started. Yeah. yeah I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, there's an herbal school down the street from us, ran okay. by this awesome couple. There's Shouts out, John. Yeah. Wait, please. But what Sorry. is an herbal school? Yeah. Yeah. So know. it's these, uh, licensed herbalists who they have this herbal school of medicine in their house. Um, and they have all these programs that you can do to become a licensed herbalist. Um, and I just like dove just on the surface. Uh, he got me a class. I think it was like the introduction to herbal remedies. Mm -hmm. And um, I took that for a couple of months. And I was like, wow, I want to make my own stuff. This is so cool. I wonder if I can actually do this. Uh -huh. um, and then I met a couple of people along the way who like got me into CBD and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, he gave me like like the bare bones of what to do, my him being my teacher. Uh -huh. And and that's how I made uh, my, the first muscle rub. Yeah. That and, is awesome. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I can make alternative medicine by myself. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how you're not like that far off from where, like from your schooling, like where you want it to be essentially. Like, exactly. You're just doing it your own way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it's so cool that you say that because I try to convey that to people because uh -huh. they're like, how do you, how did you get from like, lab to this and I'm like there's a correlation you know yeah. you can see it um but yeah yeah um, it's really cool in terms of your instructor was he also like selling his own like in top of the school like did he also like sell stuff as well that he made yes. yeah yeah so he has a very similar um like line of products he or he, he focuses mostly on like um like healing creams and ointments and he sells them in the co-op down the street in OB um, yeah, so he just like told us basically like some of his formulas and he was like, you know, this does this, this does that. Yes. And like God. these herbs do this and they do that. And I just became obsessed with learning more about it. You got to love people like that. that are just yeah. like, he's a man too. Just giving out value yeah. and just, yeah. you know, like the no sense of cop, no sense of like, I feel like a lot of that for me comes from the East coast. Like it's very like. I'm picking up what anyone else is putting down, like dog eat dog world. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like over here, it's a little different. I feel like everyone realizes like, hey, guys, the pie is big enough for us all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, I do this. This situation right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. We're all lifting each other up in a way. Um, yeah. So then that transitions into Max. So like, when did you start your thing after that? Oh, man. Um, I would say probably... Well, mushrooms go back a long way for sure uh, okay. <laughs> since I was younger. But uh, whenever I had first started growing oyster mushrooms, it was like a grow kit mm -hmm. that I had gotten. And uh, there's a long process to mushrooms. We don't have to get, you know, dive all the way in right now. Right. We could. You we could, could. If you could sum it down or like for yeah. me, I'm an out of 100 type of guy. I like to learn a little bit of everything. This is why right. I like, came from the design field. I love that I could like deep dive into things and yeah. learn as much as I want to learn to make a visual of it. But Please so I probably me. should have started with a grow kit, which is like these these things are everywhere all the time. And it's basically somebody's done all the lab work and all okay. the leg work to get this bag completely finished to where you cut it open and it just grows mushrooms right out of the bag. And I ordered. You a, have to, I'm assuming you have to like put it in a certain area, though, right? Like there's a, there's a lot of things. So you have grain spawn. Yeah. Uh, and grain spawn is basically just any grain um, that. The mycelium is put in a sterile environment. The bag sterilized. The grain sterilized. It's hydrated a little bit. And you put this mycelium into the bag. And that mycelium, the mushroom mycelium, starts to consume the entire part of the bag. And eventually, this whole bag will turn white. It consumes the grain. And you can break this grain back up, open up the bag, again, in front of a sterile environment. You're in a lab in front of a flow hood. There's okay. no contaminants. You can't just do this in a room. Okay. You know, so you cut this thing open break it apart usually, and then you would pour that into things later that would that would fruit, and those are substrates that you would pour them into. So I just got the grain and thought that I could just cut this bag open and grow mushrooms, and yeah. it'll work, but uh, it, it doesn't have half of the nutrition that it needs. <laughs> so I ordered it, and I cut it open, and I successfully grew some mushrooms out of it, and I was like, this is cool. 
Was um, that like the spark that like lit yeah. the match? And you're like, oh shit! Like, yeah, for this sure, feels good. for sure. <laughs> I got some uh, kits like whenever I was like 18 years old, some psilocybin kits. I, yeah. I did. I had to. Like, I was talking to my friend, and I was like, dude, I like, I tried mushrooms the other day, and mm-hmm. we're like 18, I think. Yeah. And and he was very strict. Like he would smoke pot, and he would be like. <laughs> like he, he would kind of act like everybody to everybody else that he was he, yeah. you know and and uh he was just getting into that type of stuff and i i didn't want to like push the envelopes because i kind of felt like the bad kid you know yeah. and so i was like we should try this he's like dude the only way i would do that or do any drug like that is if 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 we grew it and i was like cool you know i'm gonna order these kits and we're gonna do this so that's a so dope we, way to bring yeah, it yeah, yeah. so so we ordered the kits we did the whole thing and um, it, it all came out good. And that was like my first mycology intro, dude. It was like getting spores and doing the whole process yeah. front to back. So later in life now, I'm like, oh, man, I want to keep growing mushrooms and, and do it, you know, like do oysters and a bunch of different stuff. So fast forward, I grew that little plot of mushrooms on grain spawn. And then that just like, I just wanted to get educated. Hey, babe, hey. yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to get super educated after that. I was like, all right, so I just put the time in and I started looking into everything and I realized like every step I took, there was like 30 things that I should have been doing that I wasn't doing in the growing process. So I just fast forwarded into learning and, um, yeah. And now I think about six months ago. And wait, 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 before you go for it, fast forwarding to learning, what does that mean for you? Cause we all learn differently. You had like a, an instructor. Yeah. What was it for you? Like, was it just self-taught? Like, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So the I think the biggest one was uh, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms by Paul Stamets was was a book that I, that I started to dive shout into. <laughs> yeah, shout out Paul shout Stamets, out. Uh, the Jesus of mushrooms. <laughs> 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 he is, he is. He's literally his Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's an, an incredible guy. But um, yeah, so this book definitely taught me all the sterile lab work that I have to do, all the sterilization of our substrates that we use to grow on uh-huh. mycelium's fungi so at the end of the day other funguses and bacteria want to grow in there so you have to be completely sterile if that happens you know the process is is over but um yeah so after doing a bunch of research and everything uh i was actually talking to my buddy adam and um who is a co-founder of golden mushroom co Mm uh and i called him and he was like hey man have you been what are you up to and i was like oh you know we're just catching up on on stuff and i was like dude i've actually been growing mushrooms i'm growing oyster mushrooms and stuff and he was like no way dude i got a sterilizer and i was like what do you mean you got a sterilizer He's like, i got a sterilizer i got this he's like i've, I've been thinking about growing mushrooms i like started this small business oh, plan i'm like how the come world over just dude. works <laughs> like that, bro. Oh, yeah dude man. yeah so awesome. he came over and we just started like game planning and we were like okay well i just got my producer's permit from the agricultural department i like put in that time to like figure out how i could legally grow them and have the yeah. state of california basically approve that and so I was like, I'm going to keep doing my thing. Maybe we could put our heads together, grow mushrooms together. And very quickly, we realized that we were working really well together. And mm-hmm. we were like, this is this is a two-man business. So about that, like, legal legality, how how is it dealing with that? Like, it, was it difficult? And I, I want to ask you the same thing. Like, are there things, are there hoops you have to jump through in order to, like, sell these things? And right. what is that like? Um for mushrooms, I was doing some research, and then I found that everything went for farmers went through the agricultural department. I got real nervous. I had like a grow tent in a closet, and I was yeah. growing oyster mushrooms out of there, which yeah. is which is now obviously a large fruiting chamber. But um, at the time, I like put in this application. I was writing everything down, and I was like really just winging it. Uh-huh. And I sent in the application with the fee, and then they scheduled an inspection with me. And <laughs> Skyler and I were like. Cleaning the house and everything. <laughs> the yeah. House. Yeah, dude. I was like, they're going to come in and say it's not like the cleanest environment, you know? So like you vacuuming the dog hair, like uh, vacuuming dude, the yeah, dog like, himself. Yes. Like, can my dog even be in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I, I didn't know. And um, I, I wasn't sure. So she came in and literally I showed her the bags and she came in and was like, this looks good. I've, I've never seen mushrooms grown before. And I was like, never. And she was like, no, she was like, this process looks really good. All right, well, this seems good. You paid your thing. We're going to send you back your forms later. That was it. That is so dope. That like, was it. They've checked on me in my stand now in the farmer's market. Yeah. You know, make sure I'm on my stuff, you know, but yeah. Yourself, Skylar, did you have yeah. to do anything like that, like, as well? So with CBD, it's um, it's a lot easier um, only because, like, um, like hemp-derived CBD, mm-hmm. it doesn't have THC in it. So my all of my products have, like, 
less than 0.3% THC or whatever. Okay. Um, and which means it's not psychoactive, obviously. Um, so it makes it a lot easier for me. And because um, I use or I make topicals, um, I don't really have to go through any like severe licensing aside from like getting a sole proprietorship or whatever. But um, if I were to make like tinctures or anything that was ingestible, any sort of edibles, then it w- I would dive into more licensing. Okay. Yeah. So. So in terms of like how you guys both operate your business, I know you have everything at home. Do you use home as a base too for like doing everything as well? Literally everything from from designing labels to making the muscle rubs, face moisturizers, everything is in house. Yeah, packaging. Oh yeah, yep. that is awesome. That like yeah. leads me into like this next question of like, how does creativity play a role in your brands and your business today? Like, you guys, I, I, so for instance, I was super like, as I saw your tent at uh, the OB market, mm. um, I saw your logo, I saw the branding, I went to Wilson, I was like, you do all that too? And Wilson's like, no, I just gave him the logo, man. Yeah, that was <laughs> fire, Thank bro. You, man. Like, yeah. That says a lot about yeah. you guys, and I- I'm assuming that the same for you as well, Skylar. Like, you guys are putting a lot of work and effort into there. Like, mm. I-, I think it- it's like a it's it says a lot because we're living in a new age where it's kind of opening up where people can be their own like bosses, but not only mm. be their own bosses and run their little businesses. Like these little businesses could be like it's about customer experience and they could feel as good quality as you want them to feel. Yeah. And it seems yeah. like you guys put a lot of attention into experience and what it feels like to use your products. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would just love to like hear anything, like, any stories in terms of like how you guys create these. How do you guys come up with these ideas? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what um, about the Toy Blossom logo? We could start there. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah, the yeah. Toy, I'm, to me, it looks like a, is that a truffle? Or I still don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah. because we were, we were like scouring the internet and I'm like, this looks cool. This looks like, like holistic, natural, yeah. you know, we're going through all these things. And, um, Skylar actually picked what, what is it? It's like, it's like a slice of like a coral, like okay. a coral cell. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, we were looking through cells of different things like this, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie girl, Sadie's on the podcast. Yep. It's Introducing Sadie. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Sadie girl. Sadie, say hi. You, wanna, you, you just want to, she's comfortable? I understand, mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, um, but but the piece of coral uh, was brought into Illustrator, and we maybe had Toy Blossom already written. Yes. And I had the label up on Illustrator. Yeah. Um, Wait, so you so guys kind of know how to use these tools on top of everything else oh, that you're well, doing? Well, 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 um, <laughs> well. Yeah. No. Uh, not me. I have been trying to teach myself Illustrator, but it is, I applaud. It's a process. I applaud anybody who's. Oh. Can who's, I, can I give you try yeah. Figma? Oh, try what? Try Figma. Figma. I'll, I'll Figma. show you after we're done here, but it's. It, to me, it's easier than mm-hmm. Adobe products. I feel like Adobe products, a lot of times they're like so big and they, they've also gotten to a point where like you look at them and there's like, there's so much to look at. Like they're power tools yeah. and they're not really built for someone new coming into it. Like you really have to learn your key commands, know how everything works. Oh, yeah. The Figma, it's super easy and it's cool. all web-based. So like you can bring up your workflow on everyone's computer. Like if I went to your house right now and I opened up Figma, I would have access to all my files. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. what I'd wow. use to create these scenes that we did here, I yeah. use Figma. And not wow. only that, it's asynchronous. So like, we could all be on the file at the same time and I can like show you guys something. But yeah, that's just a different, that's a different awesome. day. Thank no, you for no, that. But yeah. Super cool. There are so many to it. Change the yeah. game for me right I just now. love that you yeah. guys are eager about that. You guys want to learn these things. Like there are a lot of businesses yeah. where people, they're trying to delegate as much as possible. But I feel like if you don't, if you don't, if you haven't proved the concept and you're trying to delegate things before you prove the concept, then you're kind of like, you know, wasting straws. But you guys are like proving your concept and, making yourselves like these all-in-one CEOs. Yeah. Which yeah. is awesome. It's hard sometimes being <laughs> every single position. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rough. It's rough for sure. It's like it, it takes a toll a little bit sometimes. Right? Yeah, you're exhausted. absolutely. Because, I mean, and, you're the face. Yeah, and somebody face like everything. somebody like orders something the next day, they're like, hey, what's up? Like, where, where, where's my box at? You know, or, or something, you yeah, know? And, it, and it's yeah. like, it's like I totally understand. Like, I, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can, but I'm also like, I'm, I'm, I'm the marketer. I'm I'm the person that runs all the socials and stuff. I'm the person that also makes everything. I'm the person that packs everything. You know, that's mostly for you. I'm not yeah. doing any shipping or anything yet, but 
I just see the, the, the things and the daily struggles that you go through and, and you're every single role in that business. And I know it's challenging. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of interesting yeah. for us because we're on like on the opposite side of the spectrum. Okay. So he focuses heavily on markets and mm-hmm. I'm primarily online. So yeah, I mean, I do all of the shipping and stuff and it's like a, you're the face how, of everything. How do you split up your day? Like, is your day split up by like, oh, I'm going to be a designer today and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go make some merch or I'm going to go do this. And how hard is that for you to like transition into that? I, it's, think, I think that's the great part of it. It's because yeah. we're waking up and we're like, all right, what part do we want to accomplish today? Granted, there's the yes. that have tos, you mm-hmm. know. She right, wakes right. up and always scrolls through all of her orders and she's like, okay. And if, if there's not stock of that product already, then you're making it immediately in the morning. Okay. It's getting boxed up and getting ready to go out. But all the creative things like, like the tote bags, we just put tote bags on, on the oh, product thing. We can, we can show those. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> yeah, well, really cool. I used to work at a, um, at a skateboarding company okay. called busting boards and I was already into these guys like, like major. And I ran into the owner in a coffee shop and he was like, Hey man, like that board looks, I had one of the boards and he's like, that board looks really torn up. Dude, you want to come in here and get a new one? Like uh, the headquarters is like at this address. And I'm like, where dude? <laughs> Take the address. I later am screen printing there. So I took, which I thought was dope. The fact that you got like, yeah, again, <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. yeah. So I learned how to screen print there. And at the time I didn't even think that this was going to be a, like a life skill for us to use in our business. Yeah. And I didn't even think about it until later we had shirts made and and which different by things the from way, other companies while you're those shirts it's nice hey, fuck, thank bro. you dog uh, <laughs> i would have worn it today but it's dirty because yes. i kind of yep. wore it for three days in a row <laughs> yes. actually yes. fun so, fact um, uh max's mom does all of our merch yeah yeah so it runs in the family yeah dude oh. Any, <laughs> anything you need dude. yeah it's super nice yeah yeah, Shirts are nice. yeah so yeah. nice she so, crushes it yeah she's awesome yeah actually uh after i was screen printing the tote bags and different things uh she called me and she was like hey don't take my business so i was like <laughs> 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 because you know she like third parties to to professional large screen printers um i'm, I'm, I'm assuming so uh, like yeah those shirts were nice <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but um we did the screen printing in our garage mm-hmm. uh, downstairs, and I bought screens and then kind of brushed up on the process again because I hadn't screen printed in so long. And I remember it being a frustrating process. But, yeah, dove back into it, created like a little mini dark room, uh, burned a Toy Blossom screen, and knocked out all the tote bags, and she put them up on the website the next day. That is yeah. Awesome. And we just did a small batch, and they sold, and now we're just – MTO and I'm basically made to order and yeah. I'll just go downstairs and print them out. And, and that's I, not the only thing you're using it for. Cause I saw you're using them on yeah. like packaging. Too. Yeah, like, dude. Hey, yeah. Th- throw that up. Like the, yeah, the Uline boxes, dude. Shouts out Uline. <laughs> oh, no, that's the hey video. guys, Max here from <laughs> Golden yeah. Mushroom Co. I'm really uh, excited. Cause there you go. <laughs> uh, it's one of those. I'm sorry. There you there go. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, bro. Like that's attention. Like, no one would think of that. Yeah, thank like you, uh, there, yeah. there are other people who are doing it and like, they don't care about that. They don't yeah. care about the experience. There's something like the experience is everything. Yeah. Um, like every company is turning into an experience company. I feel whether that Absolutely. be digital or physical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something has to make you feel good. You have the to yeah. that attention. I to have detail. a hard time with is like, um, what you were talking about earlier, you have to put a face to the business, you know? And I feel like in this day and age, it's like you, want to be comfortable like all the brands that i follow that i actually like and i have and have bought from i'm like this guy's cool like you know like i'm like i really like this person i support this person and it's because i see their face on social media all the time uh-huh. and i do this stuff i have a really hard time like getting in front of the camera and being like hey guys this is me this is who i am this is my personality and this is my business you know like and and showing my personality to people i kind of like creating all this stuff. I love doing the markets in person, but to create a video and be in front of the camera like this, it's like, it's challenging. It it's is challenging, it man. Is. And it's hard. Like you're speaking into the depths of socials basically. And you're I like, feel you. I mean that it makes me you like feel me? good to know <laughs> that you feel that way. Cause when I first met you guys, and I first met you specifically, I yeah. met you on Comic-Con, you were dressed as a banana. So <laughs> I would never think that like this dude dressed as a banana doesn't want to be the face of his own company. Yeah. Right. Cause he, <laughs> Thank you for saying I that because forgot about that. he says that he's like, I have trouble being in a camera. I have trouble, you know, but like his personality is so radiant. It's so opposite of what it he is. thinks. Right. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh man. I just lost. 
I whatever. can't believe, yeah, yeah, you were at Comic Con. That's how we <laughs> met each other. Yeah, that yeah. was when I fell in love with San Diego. Matt, yeah. Like when, so when I first came here, literally my first ride, I was in an Uber ride, and they took me down the hill of Narragansett. And oh. literally, that is like holy. Dude, fuck. That is like, we, I just whenever people alone. come to visit our that is house the first is like stop. yeah that like our house is like four blocks behind that and they're like hey are we dropping our luggage off and we're like wait we're like <laughs> <"Let's> <laughs> on them. we like come up to the top of the hill and we're like mm, take the right yeah. and we're like, look at that what the <laughs> fuck? no it's words just beautiful, spoken dude it's beautiful yeah. and then walking into Wilson's spot I was like oh shit. Yeah, oh this my is god, gorgeous. Dude. I had to adjust to Wilson. I was like, "Who's Wilson?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> "No, no." It's I good. call him. Yeah, I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, um, yeah. Whenever he got that spot, and we showed up over at his house, he came over. He's like, "Oh, you have to check this out." I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I was like walking through. I was like, "Oh my god, dude!" Like this. Yeah. What <laughs> you know like, for a steal? And I'm just like, "Oh yeah, man, like it's so this beautiful." Is the spot you think like when you think yeah. of San Diego, you think of a house on the beach, yeah, and that dude. was it. Literally on the beach. Yeah. The man might, wakes up to the ocean. might fall into the water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. a little sketchy. It's owned by a slumlord, but it's it's, it's a nice spot. Yeah. Hey, what <laughs> spot Nobi is, isn't it? Shouts dude. out slumlords, yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah. That, that those <laughs> people that own our apartments, the, like, upper dude is uh, Mills, and he owns 450 apartments in Ocean. I could be wrong about this, Mr. Michael Mills, but... He owns over 400 apartments uh-huh. uh, or apartment buildings. So I think some of them are multi-unit as well and owns more of Ocean Beach than I think any other person. And he just privately like owns all these spots. I and wonder if they if that's the same person that owns. Remember, maybe we had the... Um, so when we were looking for apartments, I originally wanted to go to OB. Yeah. It was my... I wanted to be there, but she convinced me to stay in Hillcrest. I, I love West. I love this spot. Yeah. I, I love back. Hillcrest. I love oh, yeah. the fact that I have a parking spot. Yeah. And as I've been exploring, like the vibe is just here. People are it nice. Um, mm. Got Trader Joe's right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, Shout out Trader Joe's. <laughs> Shout out to Trader Joe's. Um, but yeah, um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna <laughs> do. Do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to talk about your your guys's uh, continue to talk about your creativity. Like you're doing these boxes about experiences. Um, hold on, I might be cutting all this out which I'll show you guys another tool after this. Mm-hmm. Top of Figma, I use this thing called Descript. Uh, maybe I'll just do a plug for Descript right now. But Descript is basically a tool that um, takes any video or audio file, audio file you have mm-hmm. and it turns it into a transcript. But mm-hmm. what it does is it allows you to edit the video or audio file as if you were editing the transcript. So if I deleted the time I said that thing, it cuts it out for you but it goes a, a step above and it fades it in so that it never, it was like you never said that Whoa. thing. Wow. Um, so it's like Slick. a crazy tool that I use to like edit the podcast after wow. this really fast. That's awesome. It's going to cool. blow your mind you guys Yeah, streamline yes. everything, dude. That's incredible. Um, what else? Um, if you guys had to start all over again, what would you do differently? Do you want that one first? You want that one first? Um, you take it away. You take it you away. You think so? Okay. Well, I just started. You've been <laughs> in this a lot longer. How long? How old is Toy Blossom? 2019, but in the beginning or end of 2019? Mm, October of 2019. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so have, you have more time under your belt. If you were to start over from square one and going back to learning everything from John, yeah, from the herbal school to now with the CBD company, what would you do differently? Um. Honestly, I, w- I would take it back farther than that, I think. Like, going back, because I, you know, I majored, I went to school for biology. I think I would mm-hmm. focus more on, like, holistic medicine. Okay. Like, like Chinese medicine and stuff. I would definitely would go more towards that route than, um, like, medicine here, you know. And I, if I could just focus more on that and, like, different avenues of alternative medicine, I totally would, would do that. Yeah. Which I think would lead me in like a stronger, like more like, I don't know. Whenever you were working at BioReliance, it was like, it was like robot work almost. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was, you know, it was classic lab work. You just like sit in a lab bench and you're just like pipetting all day. Yeah. Which was that what you imagined it would be? Like when you went to school, like, did you think that's what life was going to, is that what like <sighs> you were preparing yourself for? No. So when I was in school, I was like, I'm going to go to med school. And that, <laughs> <laughs> that obviously did not happen. Um, 
like my third year, I was like, this is way too, this is no, there's just no way I can do like 20 more years of in schooling. In your third year? That's, that's, you, you did a lot of it though. Like that's. Not of med school. Oh, oh, my bad. Oh my, my bad. gosh, I was no. I to say you at that far, <laughs> no. just like, you know what? Like, Whoa. That's no, 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 <laughs> no, just of my bachelor's, but okay. um, yeah, yeah. Anything else you do differently along the way of, of CBD and Toy Blossom? Yeah. Um, anything else I would do differently? Um, honestly, I don't, I don't think so. That's awesome. That's good. I'm, yeah. I'm really like, I feel I'm like pleasantly surprised with how like the growth of Toy Blossom itself. I've just had so many people, not, not only like here, but from back home support mm-hmm. and they're all about it and they're like, Yes, like alternative organic skincare. This is great, you know, because yeah. so many people have reached out to me and they're like, hey, I have um, I have arthritis. I have fibromyalgia. I have like an, any of these ailments. And this helps me tremendously. And just hearing that daily just means the absolute world to me, you know. So I, I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I can only imagine how wholesome how wholesome that is. Yeah. Yeah. I have like, you know, like grandma's, uh, grandma's uncles, cousins. Like, uh, I have this family, um, the Bowen family. I got to show this to her because she would love it. But (laughs) her entire family has been supporting me since day one. Like I'm talking her mom, her aunt, her grandma, I think. And I think one of their cousins all separately order from me. And they're like, we want a Toy Blossom t-shirt. We want a tote bag. And so, I don't know. It's just like such a wholesome feeling to keep in contact with those people and have that support, you know? day ones. <laughs> yeah, my day ones. My day ones. And I think I have to credit like them, all those supporters for making me feel the way that I do now about yeah. it, you know? No, that's so awesome. I definitely yeah. want to touch on that. But first, I want to... I wanna, gotta say man oh what i would do even though you just started, i really wish like, uh, my partner was here for this adam because he we would have a million things to say about yeah. uh, what we would do differently just because we have ran forward and fallen on our face so many times but it, it was definitely the right thing to do but uh yeah if i went back i'm thinking of like a hundred things right now um if i went back in time there was a, a quite a few mistakes that we made i feel like but um I feel like you might have to know the whole process of mushroom growth almost. Yeah. But there is there's a, a few production things basically that we were doing and and we didn't have enough education of mushrooms and the entire process. We did and we we definitely did our homework. Mm-hmm. But uh for instance, uh I guess we can do like a little I'll tell you about how this process goes and then I'll tell you what we would have done differently. Okay. Uh so back to grain spawn. We take uh, mycelium from spores, so basically spores. Which is, what is mycelium, just to like... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so I've I think a of lot of people look at mushrooms and they're like, wow, look at that mushroom. That's that's a mushroom, it has like roots and that, you know. Yeah. A, a lot of people don't understand that that's the smallest part of the life cycle. That's its last chance, basically, at the very end, where it opens up that cap, the veil breaks underneath, the spores hit the ground, reproduce, and then that mycelial colony starts again. Okay. So basically, whenever those spores do hit the ground, they're carried in the wind, animals, loads of different things. One one four inch cap of mushrooms can drop a million spores. So if I'm here, like, so um, if I'm trying to connect this to something that I know, like uh, the other day, like uh, lemons went bad, and yeah. you open up the bag, and like that green smoke just goes everywhere. Is that yeah. like what you're talking? Like, is that is that is probably like or? trike mold. It's like okay. something that we would steer away from. Okay. But but all in all, bacteria, you know. But okay. so these spores will hit the ground. They'll they'll reproduce uh, sometimes by themselves or or with two spores, and they'll turn into a mycelial colony essentially over time. And if you look at like a pattern of mycelium, I wish I had like some <laughs> like some plates that I could have brought in. But next time we'll do stuff in the future. Mm-hmm. But um, basically this mycelial colony starts to build under the ground some of them sheath with roots different types of mycelium there's a there's a bunch of different actions that mycelium takes and probably go on about this forever but basically it's this white like it almost looks like the same mold that you would see but it's it's an all white mold it looks really healthy and it, and it travels through the dirt essentially builds up like a mature colony for some mushrooms that's massive spans acres and then for some it's small um once that colony matures, and a lot of people don't know how the switch happens. I mean, we know what causes it, but not exactly what decides to make the switch. Yeah. But uh, a light drop in temperature, like change in season, um, uh, oxygen, 
So whenever it comes up through the ground, it's receiving more oxygen, obviously. Mm -hmm. The light hits it, it gets a little bit cooler out, and then the mycelium forms together and it starts primordia, which is an early mushroom, and then that matures into a whole mushroom. So, so I remember I when like, I, we were talking about before, like, I remember on the beach, you had said something about, like, there's a difference between, like, growing mushrooms on, like, grain, growing mushrooms on wood, growing, like, if you yeah. plant the same mushroom on, and maybe I'm saying this totally wrong, if you it's plant fine. the same mushroom yeah. on, like, uh, grain versus on oat versus on a wood, does that change it? Like, are mushrooms like this, like, you know how lemons and all, like, citrus fruits, they're all, they all come from the same fruit, and it just right. all depends how you grow it, yeah. like, what it decides to be, whether it's sweet or whether it's sour. Yeah. Is that the same way with mushrooms? Are you For sure, yeah, specific? like, if you have, like, like a like a blue oyster mushroom, that mycelium is always that blue oyster species. Okay. Yeah, okay. there's loads of different species of mushrooms, but always, yeah, that mycelium, those spores, it's all specific to the species mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but yeah, whenever we farm mushrooms, we take a grain and, and you could use anything. You could use compost. You could grow blue oysters on banana peels. You could do And will it taste different? Will anything. it? Anything. Yeah. No, the taste doesn't really like, if you think about mushrooms growing from mycelium, uh, people use like mycelium for bioremediation, which they've like basically put mycelium onto like dirty soil, like okay. oil, oil fields, basically, okay. where there was dirty soil and the mushrooms that grew off of that. It was also cleaning and breaking down the okay. oil and making that soil anew again, basically. Yeah. Uh, but whenever the mushrooms came out, a lot of them didn't even have oil or anything in them. So they don't carry that taste or that, okay. that thing, no matter what they're grown on. But I could be surprised. Or mushrooms are or freaky, man. Yeah, are they yeah, freaky? They, they, I, so They're from outer space. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I was telling you guys, like, so I try everything uh, all the time. I still haven't found, like, mushrooms that I like or, like, that yeah. I crave. Like, we the other day, together. Priscilla yeah. made something. I liked it, but it's not like, yeah. oh, I crave mushrooms now. Totally. But I always go into it and I always, like, try because you never know how it'll be yeah. made differently. But now nah, I'm... They always just like I freak me out. It's a I texture feel like, thing. Yeah. yeah. It's yes. like the so, bouncy, like, is this gum or is this foam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's Jeez. totally fair. <laughs> I feel like mushrooms are very like a love hate. You either find the people that are like, oh my God, I love every type of mushroom. It's I so good. Cool. to love it though. I know. Like, that's how I like, I hated sushi. And then one day it clicked and now I love I sushi. And I got something on my way. palate that I can have. Yeah. yeah. I don't want mushrooms to be on my palate. Like, I yeah, want to yeah. crave it. I mean, I'll help you add that to the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. going gonna to cook some food together soon. Joke. All of us yes. are going to sit down together and Joke. do this. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, before you we're talking about a uh, community and this was a question that actually both Priscilla and I were thinking about. Um, all right. So how is the community around what you both do and is it competitive, friendly? Um, like you had mentioned, you had touched a little bit like the community for you is a little friendly. I wonder what the community is like for you. Like, and is, is it, is it, is that like, is your boss the only friendly one? Like, have you butt heads with anyone in um, your, in your, general industries i haven't necessarily butt heads with anybody but with cbd it is like a like a heavily saturated thing mm -hmm. you know where people like they see cbd and they're like ah, okay but i try to take it like a different avenue um because i make everything by scratch i mean it's by my own it's hands bespoke, you know like. yeah <laughs> yeah so and i want people to know that i want that to be in my like my logo my message like everything um so, yeah, I just make everything um, from scratch, and I want people to know that this is, like, a heartfelt, like, product that I make. Yeah. Um, I think a lot, a lot of times with CBD, you find, like, it's, like, kind of pharmaceutical in a sense, which is good, but I want mine to be, like, a more, like, like warm, like, holistic, natural approach. Mm. And I want people to, like, look at the back of the label and be like, oh, cool, there's only, like, eight ingredients in here. That's awesome. And I can, yeah. like, pronounce them all. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because you, I mean, we all go to like CVS, Rite Aid or whatever, and you buy shampoo, you buy lotion, and you like look at all these things. You're like, oh my God, mm -hmm. you know? And I kind of want to be like the bridge between the two and yeah. like help people like come to this side. Yeah, you I know? don't think I that you butt heads with anybody because a lot of the other people that are doing these large CBD products and dispensaries and stores are like, so it's, it's just such a different, you know, a lot of people, scale, I don't know commercial. anybody else that has taken grassroots approaches to CBD. Really? Right. We know That's some people in town. Point. Yeah. I, 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 
It's yes. always massive. It's like this this company has a load of money and they started a CBD line. This yeah. athlete has started a CBD mm-hmm. line. Exactly. It's not, so I don't think you do butt heads or yeah. have competition. I think that's such a part. That I think you're on like that. It is bespoke. Yeah. People are going to pay for you and your experience of what you sell your product. Yeah. Right. And, you, and you have a hard time too because you, you're like, this is an oversaturated market. Everybody's into CBD. I don't know. Like, you know, you have these thoughts sometimes. Oh, you're absolutely. Like, hey, am I going to be able to push through this wall of massive businesses that are getting into CBD and doing things? Yeah. And that's, that's scary. But, and that's yeah. another aspect of being a business owner, right? You yeah. have like these internal struggles where you're like, uh, is this... Is this the right thing that I should be doing? Is right. this, you know, you just so have to trust like your yourself. pricing, like, of things? Like, if you put up something and you're like, oh, like, it's similar to their product, but they're, like, undercutting me at, like... I was, I was talking to my, my partner about this. Like, we were... I was up at an international market, and they had um, oyster mushrooms up there, and they were, like, 7 or $8 a pound, and we're selling them for $20 a pound. And I was like, dude, like, this, this is really yeah, hard. Yeah. I don't think we can do this. He's like, Max, they have a massive warehouse... These things are all shipped all over. These people that are buying your products are buying them because they're growing down the street, man. They're right here. They don't travel Mm -hmm. from store to store. I mean, like, did you look at the quality of them? I'm like, yeah, I did. They're beat up. And he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, dude, we're doing the right thing, man. And we're charging exactly what what we need to charge to survive and and make, you know, like a decent profit of what we can. Like, it's like. So he really had to, like, get it back in my head, and he's like, come on, man. Yeah. How, like, how uh, is it for you in, like, because that was, like, a bigger market. How is it yeah. for you in, like, the local markets, like the OB market? Um, it's really good. Uh, going back to, to the question you asked Guy about, uh, yeah. like, budding heads or competition or anything like that, uh, there's another mushroom guy that's in the Ocean Beach market. Mm-hmm. And whenever I first came in there, I was like, man, I really, like, I want to be really friendly with this dude. I don't want him to think I'm coming in here stepping on his toes. Yeah. So I, I checked out his stand. And it's hard and to not come off looking like that when you yeah. come off when you come out the gate looking so damn like legit. Uh, you oh, guys both yeah. did like yeah, yeah. it's someone sees a new kid on the block, like God damn, like what? Yeah, like, right. So I want to come in here and be like this new wave of of mushroom growers and do this thing, but I also don't want to crush this family's business either. You know what I mean? So I was looking at everything he's growing. He's growing lion's mane and and had tinctures and different things. And uh, we still hadn't spoken a lot, and I was still selling mushrooms, like, you know, stone throw away from this dude in the same market. And um, they had come by and said hello a couple times and just waved, and we were like, hey, hey, you know. And um, I hadn't brought a lot of lion's mane, that his specific mushroom that he grows, which we also grow, to the market. And I grew, like, we put in a bunch of bags, and we had, like, four or five pounds one day Mm -hmm. that we were taking to the market. And I was like, man, I wonder, like, what if he sells them like a little bit more expensive? I was doing the price sheet. I do this big chalkboard and it has yeah. like quarter pound, half pound, full pound prices. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody can see and, and decide what they want. Um, and I was writing the price thing. And I was like, what if this is like two or three dollars cheaper than him? And he looks down the street and he's like, dude, really? Yeah. So I was like, I, I remember seeing this dude a long time ago. I took his card before we were even in the markets. I'd saw him. And I took his card because he was talking to me. And I started digging through all my stuff. And I pulled out the card and I was like, yes. I give him a call and I was like, hey, it's it's Max from Golden Mushroom. Uh, and he immediately was like, oh, yeah, what's up, man? And I was like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm in the middle of harvesting. Like, can I call you back? I was like, I had a quick question just real quick. I was like, dude, I'm bringing lines, man, to the market. And I just wanted to price everything this, the same price or just agree. I didn't want to yeah. come in and put it $2 cheaper and be across the street from you. Yeah. You know, and he was like, how did he oh, feel like that must that, yeah. that would touch my heart if someone like. Yeah. And at the same time, I was kind of nervous. I was like, don't hate me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um. He was like, he stopped there. Like, he seemed like he was super busy. I wanted to get off the phone at first. But then he was like, dude, that's super cool. He was like, this is how much I do a quarter, half, and full pound for. I was like, cool. And uh, got off the phone. And, yeah, that was the conversation. So, since then, we've talked a bunch. He actually linked me up with somebody. Uh, We don't even have the supply to to deal with this type of weight right now. But he, he was, like, linking me up with somebody to grow, uh, to sell pink oysters to in, like, in, like, quantity. That had a store and stuff, and because of that, now we're working with each other and doing this yeah. thing. Yeah, awesome, know? man. I yeah, think I'm collaborating and, and like networking as like like if, you, if you're in the similar field, I think that's the way. I think being competitive is just not the way to move forward. It's not, yeah. you know, yeah, it's not. because now that you yeah. like lent a hand out to him, he's yeah. like, okay, cool. Well, I have this person and that person who are interested yeah. in what you do, and vice versa. You, you can't know? come in like I'm gonna I'm gonna crush. You know, like, no. Yeah, that no, mentality, dude. no. <laughs> no it's not going to That's old. That's old news. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I, I firmly believe, like, transparency is a new black. Like, there's no way to move forward but just being transparent, 
just being honest. Yeah. Like the more you just hold things back, you're just building layers and type of layers of lies and you just like, yeah. catching up. Yeah. Um, I have this question for you guys. Like what is like, what's next for your brands? Like what, what's coming up next for you guys? Um, and even before you, if you, if you guys, before you want to do that, like just take your time to speak to the camera, tell the people what you sell, tell the people what you do, where they can find you, your website. This is a plug for you. But also my question dug in there is like, what's next for you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'm constantly trying to come up with new ideas. I know you have to stay relevant, you know? So I actually have, um, a bunch of people ask me like, can you make CBD dog treats, you know? And I'm like, well, I make skincare, so I can't really do that. And then my friend, she has a company, she does like, um, like organic meal prepping for dogs. Um, and we came together and she's like, Hey, people keep asking me for CBD dog treats. And I was like, Oh, me too. Uh, so we came together and we're actually going to launch that probably, uh, first week of May is our goal. That is awesome. Yeah. 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 So again, like collaborating is always the move, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, so I'm Toy Blossom and I focus on making, yeah, there I am, (laughs) um, organic and all natural skincare, uh, not just for like pain relief, but just like treating yourself, you know, um, I really like enjoy, or I like doing that myself. So I made products for people to do that as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. In the future for us is just providing growing supplies to people uh, from the beginner grower all the way to experts that are trying to add new cultures to their library of of different species of mushrooms that they have. Uh, Grow kits is like my favorite that's on the horizon for us. And I'm like pushing it. You know, we have so many different things that we have to focus on right now. You've been doing videos too, cooking videos, bro. I I called that out. That's full circle content because like no one knows what to do. (laughs) Like that's the best like. You buy these things, now what do I do with yeah, them? Like, exactly. They look like spaceships. And yeah, like. You know how people do the cooking reels where they're looking uh, yeah. down on top of the food? Yeah. I, like, had our wok balancing, uh, like, it's large pan, like, balancing on top of where our pots go. And then the handle was down, and I was, like, balancing the iPhone <laughs> on there, touching the record <laughs> button and cooking like this. <laughs> yeah. oh, it but works, You got to do what bro. you got to do. It yeah. works, bro. Yeah, That's but in the future, circle. I want to do classes like that. We have, um, we contacted the San Diego Mycological Society. Okay. Um, and they do like mushrooms of the month and different things. And we're going to get in on that. So every single time, you know, whenever they purchase from us, if they're a member of the Mycological Society, they'll have like 20% off all of our mushrooms all the time. And mushroom of the month for them will be 50% off. And they'll be able to get all these mushrooms at a pickup location or at one of our markets to take home. And in the future, we're going to do cooking classes. So we can't do in person yet because of COVID. We're like, the end of COVID. I can hopefully. help you live stream that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, there you we go. Should, we should. <laughs> yeah. So basic, what they're doing is they're going to have a chef that hosts and comes on. Okay. Um, we're going to have, it's going to be their mushroom of the month and the chef is going to focus on making a recipe out of that prior to the show. Dope. Uh, they're going to come over and pick up all their mushrooms from us. Um, take those home, get on the zoom call. The chef will have pre thing like pre cut things that they'll already have to get ready and prep before the show. Whenever that's ready, they get on to zoom and then the chef runs the whole recipe and we're going to be there as well. Like I'm going to have all my stuff prepped, like ready to cook as well, but we're all going to cook a meal together over zoom and eventually in person. That's hopefully I'm looking forward to that, but yeah, that and grow kits will be really cool. Right. Isn't that so cool? Taking over the world. I'm excited. You guys are creating your own little skyscrapers and this is awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. I'm excited. Thank you for having me out here, man. Yeah. I'm so happy. I mean, I guess we can just start to to sign off now, but like uh, one little piece of advice that you guys have for anyone that, is maybe, you know, in your shoes three or four years ago. Um, and I don't know, maybe they want to start a brand for themselves or like, yeah. what's one piece of advice you, know, you, you have? For run, something? fall, get back up, run, fall, get back up, yes. keep doing it. Don't yeah. stop. Yeah. Don't just, stop. just <laughs> do it. Just do it. There have been so many times where I was making something and I failed miserably. I mean, Max was right there. Time, like I'm yeah. like shaking all these oils and they're going everywhere. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to mm-hmm. do this. He's like, you got it. It's fine. You know, you yeah. have to fail like 20 plus times. And even when you think you have it nailed down, you're like, I got this. You're going to fail again. Mm-hmm. You know, it, whether it's like five minutes in or six months later, like it's going to happen. Yeah. Adam and, and I have had epic fails in the last three days. The last three yeah. days, like yeah. big ones where we're like, this is not 
good, dude. You know, like, oh, same. we have to rethink everything, you know, and, and it's just like, I feel great about mushrooms now, but in the moment it's like, oh man. So yeah. just basically, I think if, if you're going and you fall and you're like, I don't think this is going to work and you're about to turn around, don't, don't do that. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. not. I mean, it's, it's just worth it every day when you see like just the product of your creativity, you know, you're like, wow. Sometimes you wake up and you're like, wow, I like, that's that's my logo on that bag right there you know yeah, like that's yeah. crazy to think Surreal. about and you know you, you look at your labels you look anything so minuscule like that but it just means so much that you took the time to set that aside for yourself you know yeah. and then put it out into the world it's crazy yeah. it's like life you're literally like giving life at that point yeah I think yeah that biggest moment for me was um we went to a market and I hadn't done the whole process from beginning to end of mushrooms. So we went to the, a market and there was this huge king oyster mushroom. They're already big mushrooms, but this thing was like massive. And I took it home. I cut this thing in the lab. I cut this thing in half and I took a tissue culture out of the middle and basically replicated this mushroom into mycelium again, <laughs> into grain, into substrate. And like three months, it took a long time to, to have one of our bags finish and Three months later, it was ready. I cut it open, and a week later, all these mushrooms were growing out of it. And I started that from one mushroom at a market, and I was I like was splitting them all down the middle, cooking them after. I didn't even sell them. <laughs> we picked them all off and, and sliced them all up and supply. cooked them, and I was cooking. I was looking. I was like, I made this, dude. That's yeah. I, I couldn't yeah. even, like, I don't know. It was, it was unmatched feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you, you put you're, life you're into something. You're on the something. right track. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like having a baby. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like our baby. My mushroom baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we use uh, we use toy blossom every day. Literally, yeah. like yeah. in the morning. I get out of the shower. I'm like, <laughs> yes, moisturize the entire body. It's so nice. I got an unlimited supply. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From muscle rubs to the face whip. Yeah, it's all that super nice. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys for coming on. And remember, you guys can follow both of them on Instagram. Switch the scenes to them so you guys can see their handles really quickly. Um, also, show their, their websites really quickly as well. Awesome. Max, I think you should also tell the crowd what mushrooms are next to you right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think I have to do this opposite this way. This is the beautiful... <laughs> Pleurotus demore, also known as the pink oyster mushroom. <laughs> and the up other here one? we have chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those would look cool. <laughs> no, I love uh, chestnut mushrooms. Actually, Skylar, go back to your scene too and point to your products. Like, yeah, yeah. So I'm so <laughs> bad at this stuff. Okay, so that right there is my muscle rub. So that's infused with eucalyptus, wintergreen, menthol, and a bunch of really awesome oils. Um, it's basically like an alternative to Icy Hot. Um, so when people put it on, they get like instant cooling effect and relief. Um, and then up top there is the face whip. And then um, that's equivalent to like a face moisturizer. I infuse that with rose hips and frankincense and vitamin E. So it's really good for like dry or acne prone skin. Um, and then, yes, that over there is my bath soak. That's 100 milligrams of CBD. And then that's infused with lavender blossoms, rose, and chrysanthemum. So it's nice little, like, relaxing for your bath time. I think we have the muscle rub uh, scene, too. Um, I think it's, like, her holding it out. Yeah. yeah there I am. <laughs> yes. That was at a, a local vibes market in PB. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they the were local. doing that. Do, um, during COVID, you know, like everybody had like their outdoor patios shut yeah. down. Yeah. They had like a whole farmer's market in there, which was so cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, remember you guys, this is how to copy and steal, um, like, and subscribe to how to copy and steal. Um, hopefully I can have you guys on for another episode in the future and we can see where you guys are at. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, man.